We're here with Mike K, who got third place at Toy Wiz Regionals with Burning Abyss. He's about to do his deck profile. Would you like to explain the deck, please? Sure. All right. So, first, the usual. Three Graph, three Skarm, three Seer. Kind of standard for the deck at this point. You need the summons, you need the searches. Keeps you going. You play too far from... Uh, gets you out of the gin lock. Works in the mirror match, banishes a Dante or a downer or something. Three Overall, clogs too much, right? Three clogs, yeah. Two is enough, I feel. Two Libix, uh, but to keep going, if you want to just go over a huge play, clear out your hand so you can't get traced. Uh, or if you get stunned by something, you can keep going for a uh, Flying C or a Geometria or something. Or if you have a Dark Light out, you can keep going. So that helps. Two Rubix. Why not three? Most people are playing three. Uh, so Libix play or Rubix? Huh? Rubik or Rubik? Rubik. Rubik, uh, I play two Virgils. I like playing as many Rubiks as I play Virgils. So I play two and two. Okay. One Lich. Don't really use this effect too much. It's basically just for making Acid Bone for OTKs. Uh, DLS. You play Lights. You play Dante's, Virgils, those are Lights. McQuip is a Light. Veilers. Yeah, and then put main the two Veilers, so those are also Lights. This stops a lot of decks, mostly Necros. Did you think three would clog if you played three Veilers? Yeah, I think three would clog too much. Um, one tour guide, she's back down to one, so we can only have one. Her replacements, kind of, are Crane Cranes. Would you like to explain this card, please? Yeah, it, uh... It pulls a Burning Abyss basically back from Grave, and sometimes it's better than Tour Guide because you can pull back a Rubik and make a Virgil off that. You can't make a, a Virgil off a Tour Guide because of her own effect. It doesn't negate its effects, correct? Correct. It also negates the effect so Burning Abyss don't die. It just It's a good recovery card, a good combo starter, lets you keep going. After, after you essay, would you put that to three or keep it at two? I think two is fine. Sometimes I draw into two and then one would be dead in my hand for a bit. Then on to the spells. Only five spells. Raigeki, Foolish, Double Mass, Chain Second, and then MST. Any reason behind just one MST seems a little random, no? Um, I, I don't feel there's too much back row to uh, worry about right now. But I also play Raigeki Breaks, so those double as an MST if I need it, or I just feel the Raigeki Breaks are more versatile. Like, I opted for those rather than more MSTs. But sometimes you just need the clear background, so one helps. And the mass changes, just Dark Claw's good. Of course. Foolish keeps you going, Raigeki clears Jin Lock or clears any other board you can't get over. Yeah, onto the traps. One emptiness, just for the lockdown. Once you establish your board, flip that, and your opponent can't really do much. Fire Link to clear any problem cards. Only at one, I feel more clogs. Uh, I saw one more copy of it in case there's a matchup that I need more destruction, but main deck, I feel like one's enough. Because there's also a Torrential. That's good out for a gin lock or for tellers or anybody that summons a lot. Just clear the field, set off your own effects, and keep going. One Divine Wrath for any effect-heavy deck. Necros mostly. You can stop a Brio search, you can stop anything on field, you can stop whatever you need. And it's also a discard outlet, so you set off your own fix. Then four more discard traps. Two Wing Blasts, two Yankee Breaks. Like I mentioned before, this doubles an MST or pops a monster. You can pop your own monsters if you need to to set off their own effects. But whatever you need to do, it's just overall a versatile card. Uh, Wing Blast is also good. Not as good as Necros, but it sets your opponent back a turn pretty much because they have to draw what they just had on field again. So that's useful as well as the discard outlet. Then we play two mistakes in the main deck. Uh, a lot of decks search right now. Burning Abyss searches through Skarm, but generally you can get your own Skarm off before flipping Mistake and then just lock your opponent out of searching at all with that. Um, yesterday I killed a lot of Rotas. Like, there were dead Rotas in people's hands. Necros was just completely done. Uh, the mirror match, it helped a little bit. I established my field, searched what I needed, and then stopped him from searching. And overall it just helps a lot. And then for the last traps, we got three Mind Crush. So that if they do end up searching, you can pick it out of the hand. Or if Burning Abyss tries special summoning, you can pick that out and stop them from doing what they're doing. Any reason there's no Karma Cuts? Because when I played an Abyss player yesterday, I had one Deneb on board and two in Grave. He Karma Cutted my one on uh, 
yeah. on the field, and then both of mine were banished, and it got really awkward really quickly. I feel Karmica is good. I don't like it because it only hits monsters, and most of the time I'm more worried about back row, mm -hmm. so that's why I opt for Raigeki Break over that. All right. And, uh, yeah, I feel like adding it in, there would be too many discard outlets at that point, and that's just clogged you as well. And let's go the extra deck. Pretty standard. Three Dante. Two Virgil. And one Giga Brilliant, just to uh, boost up anybody you need to get over something bigger. One Owl card clears back row. Uh, you can make a Skarm under it, search as well while you're clearing back row. Then have a Graph or something under it so when he does die, that'll just give you another Burning Abyss monster. Nightmare Shark to close out games. As the goal, to go for OTKs or beat over something big. Uh, Zen Mains is more spot removal for uh, if there's a Shadow Imprisoning or something on field. Or I had to make it against Klee's yesterday. To uh, I made a Virgil and Zen Mains cleared both their scales away. And they top pot of riches. And they top pot of riches. We don't talk about that. It was your only loss of the day. It's okay. My only loss. That's right. Um, yeah. So Zen Mains helps sometimes. And equipped helps a lot because. You can make a Farfa under him, or a Seer, or a Graph, which will get you to a Farfa, and basically activate his effect on your opponent's turn, he'll be safe for a turn, and you'll disrupt their play by banishing whatever monster they needed. Then, two downers, just to go over dead Dantes, or anybody else who's dead, and ensure that the Dantes go to Grave if they get bounced by Triver, or uh, banished by Trish or something, and you still get your add. And then, two Mash Chain, so two Dark Boss. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah, that's it for the extra deck. Uh, okay. Off to the side. Oh, yeah, I had one question. Um, I know people play in Abyss Leviathan Dragon to get over, whatchamacallit, Dark Claw. Right, right. How'd you, how'd you get over Dark Claw if you didn't have a discard trap or anything? Um, you can stick for Virgil, basically. Sure. You can, uh, you can Zen Mains pop it. Alright. You can Azagol and beat over it. There's, there's a few outs. Alright. And on to the side. So, two spell cancelers. Stops Necros. They can't play anymore. It's a good card. Two Vanity Fiends. Also stops Necros. Stops other decks. Um, yesterday when I matched up against Necros, I made Vanity Fiend and spell cancel on the field with four or so back row to protect them both. So, it's pretty much auto win from there. And that guy you beat like that, he got ninth. He got ninth, yeah. Then, uh, two Lanceo. Uh, some people like siding this in Necroz matchup. I only side these four for Necroz because I don't want to ruin my own main deck's consistency and I also main deck a lot of hate for him. Edwin, the other Abyss player? Uh, the two Lanceos are for Ritual Beasts, actually. Because I don't like when they sit there forever with their Canahawk loop, so I'll just stop it with this and just be safe for a turn. Did you play any Ritual Beast yesterday? No, I didn't. So I never actually signed this in this way. Two Maxis, they're basically for the mirror match. Uh, I don't fear any other decks by summoning all too much. So it stuns the mirror match for a turn. Didn't really side it down against us. And then, uh, two Mirror of the Ice Barrier. Talk about this card. I play this for, uh, for the mirror match because... If you get far foot, you can activate this, banish two of theirs back. So what will happen is your monster will come back at the FAs, but theirs will stay banished. All right. So it ends up being a blowout in the mirror match. And um, Did you side versus Darklaw, or you use it against it, Darklaw? Yeah, you can also use it against Darklaw or BLS, because the way I see the mirror match turning up is... First one to Darklaw, BLS, or whoever Farfa's better targets ends up winning. And this shuts down all of that. So I feel like if you resolve this in the mirror match, it's just a blowout. And then two more cards for the mirror match, and then you can take your opponent's Dante, trigger your own effects, do what you need to do. And then on to other stuff. Just generic back row hate in case there's... For the clean matchups yesterday or any other deck that has a lot of back row, you can just take out problem cards. Alright, well, uh, how many people were at the regional lot yesterday? I think it was only like one. 190? Because there's the YCS, obviously. Yeah. Um, what were all your matchups? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Round one was, was Yosenju. That was a 2 0 blowout before we even got the match lips. Uh, round two. What up in round two? Necros? No. 
No. No, that was Heroes. Heroes ranked it. Uh, I dropped the game to Heroes. That's the Sir Virgil play? That yeah. pro play? Yeah, that, that I messed up a bit. Uh, round three, I think we? I don't play at that point. Uh, I joined the Fire Lakes early. Game two, I had two Fire Lakes in hand. just looped them with round two. And just blew him out. Uh, what else was there? There was a BA mirror match as well. You played Necroz round four or five? Five, I think. Yeah, four was the BA mirror match. That was, uh, five was Necroz, six was Klee when you lost. Six was Klee when I lost, seven was Evil Swarm, and eight was the Tires. Yeah. So, um, there were eight rounds, right? Eight rounds. Alright, well, you won the nice deck box. This Matt, and I think there was an additional prize. You got some packs, right? Six packs. Yeah. Pull anything good? Uh, soul changes. Nice. Well, so last thing before we go. Um, you also played Abyss at Philly. How'd you do at Philly? Uh, not too well. So, what changes did you, uh, to the deck did you make? What changes did I make? Uh, Philly, I was mainly anti spell for mm -hmm. I only ended up playing one Necros player. Mm -hmm. I didn't even draw into the anti spell. The only person I drew it against was a Blackwing player, and it didn't even come at that point. Um, I took those out completely in favor of spell cancelers. You took them out of me, what did you replace? Uh, I put in Crane Cranes. What? Two Crane Cranes went to the game for that. You said you had a record, you can't be on camera. And uh, two Dark Holes came out of the side in favor of these two. The mirrors. Alright, well, thanks Mike, and congratulations on your first top eight. Alright, we'll be back with you guys later.